it's a beautiful evening it's about six o'clock and I think it reached about 85 degrees today and it got up to about 88 yesterday so really really it's been hot and I'll show you um, quickly here how everything's doing we have um, I have a lot of kale growing and it's looking really nice um, ready to make something with that and then and the Napa cabbage Chinese cabbage is doing great I have some of the gray shallots down in there hiding, but they're doing great. They're greening up nicely and just growing like a weed, <laughs> but they're not a weed at all. And then here I have some chives. This is the second year growth for the chives, so they're producing their little blossoms. I've had a great time using those. I'll include um, two links to some recipes if you're interested in how you can use your um, common chive blooms. Um, the sugar snap peas are climbing their way up the trellises and then I have rapini this is the first time I've grown it so I do believe um, that that's a cross between a Chinese cabbage and broccoli so it is looks like it's time for me to start cutting on it or either just take the whole plant out I've got to look that up and find out exactly how I harvest it so um, I'll do something fun with it um, let me show you see what else I can show you here over here we have a parsley and hyssop doing well my second year of growth on this one lonesome little strawberry plant but it's covered with blooms so they're all up underneath those leaves so I'm hoping I'll get some strawberries this year that'd be nice okay over here um have some slow bolt cilantro that I planted um that'll be nice and then the broccoli here is starting to head and if you are growing broccoli I'll tell you a couple tips when it starts to head up like that you need to start watering it really good maybe like every day and then um, if you start to notice uh, any kind of white cabbage moth flying around the little tiny white butterflies and <laughs> they're really moths you need to go ahead and spray with BT when you see those little moths BT will um, kill the little worms when they hatch out of their little eggs that the moth lays on there and then that way you can eat the broccoli and the worms won't be on there <laughs> okay and let's see what else here shallots are doing great i've been checking my parsley every day for the parsley caterpillar worm just to see if it's crawling around and if you see a parsley caterpillar worm you can take it off and take it somewhere else or you can put it in a little container and grow it into a little butterfly and i'm gonna put a link to how you can do that we did that last year and it was a lot of fun over here um, more cabbage doing great um, I'll go ahead and tell you I have had um, a black flea beetle infestation on my cabbage and they go for the Chinese cabbages first and the way you identify that is you look for little holes in the leaves and so let me show you a close up of some of the damage if you can hopefully you can see yeah there it is okay little holes like that and um, there's one little flea beetle right there you can barely see look what they are like little bitty fleas and how you treat for that is you spray with spinosad, I think that's how you pronounce it. And it takes about three applications, and they will be on their way. They will be out of here. The um, eggs overwinter in the soil. So apparently I brought in a transplant. I think it was probably some of the red cabbage. Um, that's really the main thing that I brought in of the cabbage um, for transplants that I bought at this big box store. So I think they came in in the soil of one of those. So... FYI, that's one of the disadvantages, I guess, of buying your transplants. Most things I start from seed, but sometimes I have a weakness and I go and buy something from this big box store. So I did end up with some black flea damage, uh, but I, it seems to be under control. Here's, they really attacked this cabbage here. They like the seedling, so this was much younger because I was growing it from seed. So they're going to go for the tender growth first. I don't, didn't bother any kind of spinach or anything like that. And then that, that I grew from seed. That's Corvair spinach. Okay. Um, over here is the red giant mustard. It is really a beautiful little plant. I've been playing around with that a lot. I'll include a link to a dish I made with that. Um, it is starting to go to seed now. So I will not be harvesting the leaves anymore because they will be bitter, you know, once you've once things start to bolt, you're not going to get that good flavor. And mustard's pretty strong anyway, so I want to make sure that I harvest it at its prime. So anyway, um, I'm going to actually try to let this go to seed 
and I want to keep it in the garden and I'm going to try to make a little tiny bit of mustard with it this year. I don't know. I've never done that before, but it'll be fun to try it out. I'm hoping that it'll be kind of a darker mustard. We'll see how that works out. Spinach is still producing over here. Carrots are doing great. Um, more parsley. I have some shallots in here. And I've got to harvest that lettuce right there. It is really doing well and I do not want it to even start to bolt because it's real bitter then if you do that. So I think I'll be having a lot of salad tomorrow. I'll probably just go ahead and harvest it, put it in the fridge. That's the best thing to do. And let's see, um, over there I um, amended the soil for some uh, golden gold that I'm going to plant probably next week when, the, when it's safe to put out all of my frost sensitive plants. And so I'll include a link to that if you want to amend your soil. I have a hard clay soil, so. And basically over here, everything's about the same as it is in the beds. Same kind of plants, but I will show you. Um, I'm real happy about all the cilantro that's coming up this year. All this has naturally reseeded itself. And this is pretty much doubled in size from yesterday. <laughs> uh, I watered it real good last night, and with the little the temperatures it's really growing it will bolt very fast that's why I'm also growing a slow bolting variety uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and figure out something to do with this hopefully before it starts to bolt <laughs> gotta do something quick if I want to use it and then the dill um, all over here I harvested a bunch of that yesterday and used it in a something so anyway I'm real happy about all the things that have naturally receded I don't to till my soil so a lot of things come up naturally and um, more onions are starting to bulb up down there at the bottom little red onions and I'm gonna pick those early and use them that'll be nice to use them very early I went ahead and planted by, from seed pink tip greasy beans so I'm looking forward to those this year that's something new I grew greasies last year this one right here these are already coming up. These are some greasy beans that I saved the seed to. Then over here is some of the uh, valerian that I moved. It's not going to make it, I don't think, but not that I care. It doesn't matter. If you live locally and you want this plant, come get it. <laughs> I dug it up two days ago and put it over here, and it's, it's not going to make it, I don't think. <laughs> it needs a home. Right here is amaranth, elephant amaranth. So looking forward to that this year. Something else new. I'm going to sow direct sow some more seeds for amaranth a couple other different varieties too and the garlic's looking great lots and lots of garlic over here um, oh and I want to show you one more thing about garlic oh, first I'll show you here that's the thyme silver thyme's doing really well I went ahead and put out a couple of tomato plants that I should not have put them out yet but hopefully it's been so hot I just don't think it's going to get cold but you never know it always it always tricks me every year <laughs> okay um garlic i want to show you this i'm growing soft neck garlic and that's usually what you buy at the um, grocery store so if you plant garlic from the grocery store and you notice that your garlic is not getting uh, pr producing escape and that's the little shoot that pops up out of the garlic and produces the flower the reason why you're not getting escape is because um, it is soft neck garlic. So I planted soft neck garlic, but I didn't get it from the grocery store. I bought it at the nursery. But um, if you want scapes, you need to grow hard neck garlic. Okay, so right there, it tried to produce a scape right here, but they've been cultivated to not produce the flower. So I uh, just wanted to let you know about the garlic. Okay. My garlic's doing very well. I can't wait for, to harvest that. Won't be too much longer before I get to use it. Okay, well, thank. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> Forgetting all these little things. Potatoes. I have Purple Majesty potatoes here. They are just taking off like a rocket. The last time I, I think I showed the potatoes, it was right after a freeze. The foliage had died, but they're, you should, as you can see, are doing fine. And then over here is Apple Fin Fingerling potatoes. I just planted uh, three of those this year. Okay, wonderful. So hopefully everybody's having a good time out there with their garden. And if not, you will be out there soon. It is 
beautiful summer is upon us. Thanks so much for watching.